Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Hey, what up, America? It's your boy, Bouchon Glover, Battered Black America TV on YouTube. And if you're wondering why I'm geeked up and I got this glow, is that, man, we made it, man. Today is August 20th, 2019. And if you look at the 1619 on my hat, that was the first documented transatlantic slave to reach the shores of Jamestown, Virginia. And I'm keeping it honest and 100 with you. That's 400 years, man. If you subtract 2019 from 1619, that's 400. And a lot of people don't understand. A lot of people don't understand what's, what the significance of this 1619, you know, and this privileged people 1619 that I'm rocking right now in stores this, uh, this, this uh, fall. But, um, the reason that 400 year is so prevalent uh, is biblical. And if you're wondering why we're in so much turmoil, you know, from a political perspective, you know, the two party system is in a civil war is to block the truth. It's a smoke screen because we're talking about everything but the truth. Happy born day, black America. And I'm going to be honest with you. A lot of people don't know. So I'm gonna give you some prophecy real quick that's biblical to talk to you about the curse because the curse is over. The curse is over. We, we made it through. We made it through. I feel so good to be alive today to talk to you about the 400 year curse being over. And some people don't understand that is a real thing, you know, and I keep saying that, but I'm gonna go ahead and read some. Let me just stop the music real quick. Okay. Now, biblically, from the Bible, it's a good book right here. Okay. I got a nice one. Okay. And I have to read some passages to get you to understand what the real is. Because when I hear, I've heard Farrakhan talk about the for 400 years, 400 years is today. Okay. Now this is out of the book of Genesis chapter verses, uh, chapter 15 verses th uh, 13 and 14. Okay. And just, I'm going to read this and a lot of people, you know, the Bible is full of stories, but you know, things continue to happen. You know, they recycle themselves. So I know this is biblical times, but it's also prophecy and you can advance these biblical prophecies to modern time because look at the look, look what it says. OK, and just put the correlation together. OK, then the Lord said to Abraham, you can be sure that your descendants will be strangers in a foreign land. They will be oppressed as slaves for 400 years. But I will punish the nation that enslaved them and in the end, they will come away with great wealth. And may God bless the hearing and the reading of his word. That's in the book of Genesis. OK, and a lot of people don't understand that there was things that was in the uh, that were omitted from the Bible because they didn't want people to know what was really going on. So if it's in there, it's sending a message. OK, because the framers of this country, you know, they were God fearing Christians and they still are. OK. But if it's in there twice, if it's in the Old Testament and the New Testament, they wanted you to get the message. So let's go to the New Testament. Now, this is Acts of the Apostles. OK. And that's uh, Acts 7 and 6. God also told him that his descendants will live in a foreign land where they will be oppressed as slaves for 400 years. But I will punish the nation that enslaved them. Now. It's in the Bible. Does that doesn't that sound familiar? The first transatlantic slave reached the shores of Jamestown, Virginia. In the year 1619. August 20th. And today commemorates that. Where is our celebration? Where is our parties? Where 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 are we as people celebrating our uh, 
400 years. And I think it's, it's, it's a quacentennial, like quad, four, quacentennial. Where's our leaders? We have none, you know, and the narrative is about Jay-Z and the NFL. So you have a, a, a Nipsey Hussle's birthday was on the 15th, who was like a Messiah type figure, died at the age of 33. And that was, you know, for me, it was a sign. And then when you look at his birthday being on August 15th, okay. And then his name being Aramis, meaning God will rise. And then all the earthquakes and things that we've had, you know, this year. It's a sign, okay? God's people. Now, when you look at the correlation between the Bible and the slave trade, we were taken from our land. We had culture. We had our own language. We even had our own God. But we came over here to the United States of America and was stripped of that. But they don't talk about the skills that we brought. They saw how Portuguese was, 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 was blowing up through agriculture. They saw how the pyramids and they saw the, the, the resources in Africa. So they needed us to come over here and build that. And then when they talk about slavery versus the Holocaust, the Holocaust was filmed, slavery wasn't, but nobody is talking about the truth. But Generation X, but Generation X, my generation, you know, they tried to just, you know, that unknown, that X, that unknown factor from a mathematical term. They just pushed past us and got to that Pepsi generation. That's why we're spiraling and out, spiraling out of control. Because you can't, take, you can't do subtraction or learn subtraction without adequately learning how to do addition. Okay, same thing for timetables and division. Okay, so you can't skip a generation and expect things to recycle. Because when you look at the two-party system as a whole today, it's baby boomers. These are very old people trying to frame the future. Look at Bernie Sanders, who's a socialist. 77, 78 years old. And he's pushing an agenda that he don't know the effects of. But when you go back to the civil rights movement, you know, it was a, it was a, it was a game done by Lyndon B. Johnson and J. Ergo Hoover, who basically created this ethnicity of African-American, signed the Civil Rights Act, which was for the advancement of the black race. But he, he, he added everything to it. Feminist groups, which includes white women. The LBGTQ community, which includes white men. And we've been boxed out for 50 plus years. We should be celebrating 55 years of advancement in this nation from the civil rights era. But we're sitting back and we just celebrated it this month in June, 50 years of pride. OK, everybody had their shot. Everybody had their time. So now it's time to, for the black race to close the race, it, the close the chapter in race, because you talk about race, it's racism. And when you talk about race, it's a race. So they won and they have, de you know, they're declared champion. Even though we helped build this country, we fought in the Revolutionary Wars, the Civil War. And then now when you talk about mass incarceration, we rebuilt the South in the Reconstruction era after the Civil War on free labor in the name of criminalization. Criminalization. Sometimes I get tongue tied because I get excited. You know, but it's our time to shine, people. We can't just sit back on the sidelines and be spectators, you know, because up until this point, you know, if you're, you know, it, it, it's not, I, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. I just want you to understand, you know, that it's time to connect with a higher source because the only way we're going to get out of this is if we connect with that higher source and that's God. Not from a religious perspective because religion causes division, but from a spiritual perspective, because if everyone is connected from a spiritual perspective, then he and or she is accountable for their actions. OK, now, like a radical Muslim, he'll blow up a building in the name of his religion. But if he was spiritually connected with God, there is no way he would do something like that. Just like that gang banger. You know what I'm saying? That 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 person that's hurting and black on black crime and shooting and killing his brother. If he had a relationship with God, there's no way that individual can pull a trigger if he or she had a relationship with God. And I'm keeping it 100. OK, because God didn't tell you to do that. OK, your your insecurities and your issues and stuff that's that you're going through have done that. So I'm going to just go ahead and grab this book real quick. 
And see, a lot of people, you know, be winging it and, you know, just doing whatever. But, man, this thing is real, man. Dr. Joy DeGroote, post-traumatic slave disorder. It's time to heal as a nation, black folk. Post-traumatic slave disorder. It's time to heal as a nation, black folk. The curse is over. Now, oppression. We are not going to allow ourselves to be oppressed anymore. Because we, it's time for us to take a page out of their handbooks, out of the, the white community, the Jewish community, the Arab community, the, the Chinese, Japanese, everybody looking out for themselves and their personal disposition when it comes to their culture and their people. So us as black folk, us as black Americans, not African-Americans, that's an insult. As black Americans, Negro, you know, which is black in Spanish and come from the Negroid. And if you didn't know, it's only three races, you know, just keep it 100 with you. The Anglo-Saxons, the Caucasians, the Negroids, which is the blacks, the melanated people, as well as the Mongolians. And everybody has had that barbecue. <laughs> That's a joke. But at the end of the day, that curse is over. And what we go, what are we going to do? And they know it is. That's why, you know, Jay-Z partnering up with the NFL May, do you know that the 400 year curse is over? You know, because or are you looking out for your own personal disposition? A lot of people have issues with what's going on, but a lot of people understand, like, let that man do what he's going to do. He don't owe us anything. You're right. But when you got that type of power, you know, instead of partnering up with the NFL, you can create eight or have your own league. Look at Ice Cube doing with the big three. You can have your own league, not rival of the NFL but a part of NFL. So therefore, we as a race, it's time to organize, it's time to stand up. And we don't have any leaders. We all got to speak because any leader, God's type figure, you know, they, they will blow their head off. So we all going to have to stand up. And when it comes to being black in America, we don't have to be what they would say anti-American because we have 400 years invested in this nation. So this is our country just as much as it's anybody else's. So therefore, What's wrong with being a subsidiary of America? And I'm going to say that again. What's wrong with being a subsidiary of America? Nonpartisan independence when it comes to voting. You know, we've been talking about a blackout 2020. Meaning, y'all go ahead and handle that and we'll just get ready for 2024 because uh, there's no agenda for the race. You know, because y'all trying to erase our history and we got to stand up to uh, uh, put ourselves back in the conversations. Because right now you got our elected officials on the Democratic side talking about Israel when they their own districts are, you know, rat infested. Yeah. Baltimore is one of the top five rat infested uh, cities in America. And then if you look at the most crime cities, they're pretty much Democratic, you know, but I'm, that's a whole nother sop, uh, topic of discussion. But at the end of the day, it's time for black people not only to be black, but to understand that it's OK to have our own agenda like everyone else now when it comes to our own agenda like i said how jay-z had the power instead of partnering up he could have created his own league okay which is okay so instead of partnering up let's create our own black nation within this nation as a subsidiary just like you know in lamest terms you got universal then you had death row okay death row was a subsidiary of a major label so why not be a subsidiary of one of the most powerful nations in the world and control our own masters, meaning control our own disposition, create our, our, our institutions, create our social and economic situations, our education, our training, so we can survive. Because right now, the survival of the fittest. So we have to survive as a race. And we cannot be erased out of history because when they go back and say, what did you guys do? In your time, when you was on this planet, you know, at this point, we can't say we've been sitting on the sidelines spectating because now the smoke is clear. Now that we're free, it's time to make a move and it's time to advance, you know, from a social and economic perspective to be in power in the sense of having wealth, generational wealth. Because when you talk about socialism, socialism will erase any type of wealth moving forward. But I'm going to keep it short right now. 15 minutes of funk. Congratulations, Black America. The curse is over. Until next time, we're going to keep this content coming. 
a better black America, a better black America, a better black America. God bless.